and see what we're doing and say, you know, see what's going on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna post this video on YouTube if you don't mind, and then just make it available on Slack for because I think it's really good to have just just this, what you just walked us through for anyone who's doing now. this for the first time, just to have like an idea of all right how to level a bed and what that looks like. And uh, a lot of what you were talking about during that process yeah. is also very useful, like waiting until it heats up to yeah. level it and that kind of stuff. Now, and, yeah, it's not printing well. It's printing pretty badly right now. Okay, okay that's now, good to know. To be fair, I got this print this new computer today. It was just given to me, so I don't have all my like. You'll adjust your profile over time. You'll you'll download Kira. You'll get the profile and you'll run it, mm -hmm. and you'll see this is kind of numbers change. It's under extruding tweaked. a little bit, so I might go tweak the temperature a little bit. And I think this has a lot to do with my my little thermal sock that should be on it. Thermal sock. What does that look like? Where, I mean, where would it go? Well, right on the on the heat block, there's a big metal part right towards the nozzle that actually is where it's, the heat's going. Uh -huh. That's where there's this resistor that's just pumping like 15 watts of heat into it. Okay. Um, it ships with Kapton tape to wrap around it. Okay. To keep that in, so that and that heat oh, is going so right straight now, into the neither material. the sock nor the tape are on it. Right. So okay. my print failed. All oh, of the okay. all the filament went up and around that heat block. It just curled for some reason, yeah. which I was able to crank it up to like 300 degrees yeah, just peel it and just peeled it off, but it took all the tape with it. Yeah. But it was 10 bucks to order silicon sock to replace it. But I got five of them, so I'll just give you one right off the bat. And awesome. Then, then you can just slap it on and not worry about that. So I until, so they, until you mess up a print and it gets eaten. Is it less about retaining one. the heat and more about protecting it from that or both? It's more about keeping the heat into the nozzle because the irony is that you want the filament to get really hot really fast and then cool instantly gotcha. so you can't, it can't you keep it in a it very low glass spot yeah it can't be hot up Back here up stream because then you're, yeah. you're pushing melted yeah. stuff down the tube it, it, it needs to get hot actually burn and extrude actually, in this like millimeter span the filament and then yeah. it, so. i'm wondering if you could use a laser to do that instead but you know that's probably yeah different. i wonder however it is they do i'm sure it makes sense i i think the greatest yeah. thing is that there is they, they didn't go out and get like high-tech heating elements they just went and got 10 watt 1 ohm resistors and but laser, they wired it yeah. at 24 volts and it just pumps out heat. A laser wouldn't make any sense any because the size of a laser that you'd need for that would be way too large. I miss the bed leveling is it just putting the paper under and then yeah. turning these wheels yeah. and, and getting Until it, it just, grabs. It just grabs. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. 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 I remember the old days when we had to level the bed so that, but that looks kind of nice. There's a nice big handle so yeah, there's the really one easy. feature people love. That's kind of cool. Big wheels. Big well plus he covered all the different parts that he printed for this printer to customize it and really add to it, like the vent cover right. down here, uh, the air, the airflow nozzle. You'll appreciate yeah. the stupidity of this design. Blowing the, the room temperature air on the hot bed. Well, and this is zero, so it comes out here and extrudes just off the bed and then goes over the bed, pushes that little bit down into that box. Yeah, this is great. So you've got, <laughs> which is, wait, wait, that's why you've got little... Also airflow where it shouldn't be I just love that they that can is. have a bad design yeah, and right. the reviews yeah. will be like, Oh, so it's terrible design. It's a one star. <laughs> Fifteen minute print <laughs> job. We'll fix it. But just, just print it over here, and then you'll have a good print. And then it's well, yeah, or change your z-axis. Yeah, but even then, you can see how much. That's what I was going to say. Those those filaments are from that. Okay. Yeah. And if that gets into that control box, oh. it'll take a while before it builds up to like a critical mass yeah, to yeah, really mess with it. But let's just like not let that happen. And then also this 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 tool part he printed out. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. This and yeah. it ships with these nice. Diagonal clippers, sure. and this is the real killer of the show. Real putty knife thin, that they sharpen for good scraping. Yeah. That's always our you know, putty knife. Yeah. Like, oh, but it's not thin. Enough. Yeah, and you'd have to go sharpen it yourself. Yeah. They they sent you a sharpened one. Cool. Right. This just has to add so much cost oh, no. to the to the bomb because like somebody's in there yeah, yeah. manually Handle, grinding this. Is handled by somebody. You can tell that this was done yeah. in the in the shop. Like this was by this company. Again, this is a 3D, this is a Chinese printer, but it's not fair to call it like bulk manufactured Chinese printer. It is like a small company. What was the, the information that you shared before about the person who was involved that was yeah, kind of well known for? Naomi, the... Naomi Wu. Oh, yeah. yeah, she she got brought in by Creative Reality to help them make a open source printer. So everything about this would be open source. So the whole design, everything is accessible on their GitHub. Um, so you could go out and get aluminum extrusion. 
and cut the aluminum bed and you know if you had access to I mean theoretically here we could we could get aluminum we could throw it on a shape oko and cut and run the pattern to get the, the bolt holes and it could build this off. not for 200 bucks though I mean, not, it's not really for I mean, it's bucks. crazy <laughs> when you look at that price you go wow that's and it's like this nice anodized yeah, aluminum yeah. it shipped with these you know these caps right it didn't they didn't need to put those in right. you could have just had the exposed so there's a really good attention edge. to detail that's true. do you think that Naomi like does, does your sense of who she was is as a person in terms of her blogging and her you know yeah, well, do you mean, think that's some of the touches she may have added to, to it just that attention to detail yeah yeah, I mean, they've, they've been around. There was the CR-10 that they made before this, which I was reading about it. There's a lot of parts form. compatibility between the two. Yeah, right? it's, it's the same extruder. It's the same structure. I think it's the same control board. Um, but it was larger, probably like an extra $100. Yeah, so now it's really starting to... Uh... How do you know it's a bad print quality right now? I'm just curious. You can kind of see that... You don't have these full, complete lines. If you get down on the edge, you can see that it's a little bit holy. At that's the a edges. pretty low density print, though. That's a lot of, lot of emptiness. I mean, that's twenty percent. Is that twenty percent? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's pretty high for what I do. Oh really? Oh yeah. really? Okay. I mean, apart like, and you can feel this. Yeah, but you never do it for structure. But you're not, you're not building it to hold anything. Yeah. Okay. This is gonna hold this filament, but all it needs to do is hold this. That's all it needs to do. It's not taking much load. Right. So it's really just how it looks in your experience is how you're able to identify that it's yeah. not such a good print. I'm just trying to figure out how a newbie with no experience, such as myself, would yeah. be able to identify that this is actually a poor print. A little bit of print. practice okay. is really, but you, you can, this I would define as under extrusion, and I think it's because yeah, I'm losing yeah, temperature yeah, okay. from that thermal sock not being in there. I've got to ask because it seems like you know a lot about this and its history and some yeah. related stuff. Do you think the Ender name is at all related to the Orson Scott card book? I don't know. I don't know where they get their names from. I am familiar. I, I was kind of wondering That's about the only, how only Cowboy reference that came to mind. Huh? Yes, that was the only reference that came to mind. But then so there's they, this, you've got to be aware of the, the Then there's this dragon, and I don't think the dragon was really related to the Creality brand. That's just the Ender gets the dragon. Right. Well, yeah, Creality is also... So, yeah, it'd be kind of fun if it were, uh, if like the next model ends up being Achilles or Bean or something like that. Then we'd know. <laughs> then we'd know. Well, then they went from the CR-10, they had like the A-something... And then this one has a name, so they right. They went through a bunch of iterations of not having names to then have a name. So does this have a self leveling bed? No, not yet. No, it, it doesn't. Will, no, but it, uh, there are sensors that you can buy for that help with uh, leveling, so make, it makes the leveling process much easier. But it's not self leveling. It's manually. You're putting it in each of the four corners. These guys. Yeah. So right now, it's running the print job off of a G code file that you gave to it. Yeah. It's not connected to anything else. No. And it's basically entirely standalone right now they are. in terms yeah. of the system. Yeah. And, and I can even hear it now. It's having trouble extruding still. So it's reporting 200 degrees Celsius, but I don't think that that's actually what's happening because it looks like a thermal sock. No, there's a, there's a display. I don't use that. I don't use it. What's that? I use Octoprint in my classroom. It's, it's, it's a Raspberry Pi. It's a manually wirelessly loaded. Oh, so you hook it up to this, and then instead of having to connect to it every time, you, all right, that's cool. Yeah. I use that for my friends. So you can like control it, like by switching it. So it really helps optimize the whole workflow. Yeah, you can create like custom code things, like you said. I just like put my own points instead of downloading the code file. Like each point that I want to go to, and then I manually level that point. Instead of because he's running a GPU. Oh, so device. the Octoprint controls the printer for you, and yeah. you set up this macro to basically have it go to the points to facilitate your your bed yeah, leveling. Yeah, like code scripps, and you can just get this tons of plugins and stuff for it. Nice. That's awesome. It's definitely oh, Yeah, no, I like that. So Octoprint. Because I've, I've seen it just in terms of like even just poking around with what I've done already. So clearly people are using it. No yeah. way you get paid. Don't worry about it. For us, you have to work it out. We make up the time. And these are all uh, miniatures from a, for a dwarven brewery or something? Nice classroom we have. They're like I-7. So how many people are going to 
So these are going to be for your D&D campaign? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, like, license the places. <laughs> Fool everybody, you know? Best I can tell they put this out like that. Not that it does anything, but... I'm actually so impressed well, by the build quality of it. I didn't expect it. Yeah. Uh, I think it's 256 gig. The, like, the EMAC SSD. For the feds, it's very much like 250 gig. Hard disks. Uh, I think. Of course not. Especially well, I know. That's what I mean. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Yeah, probably not kind of funny. The mouse driver will just fail. Definitely not kind of funny. And, like, I could sit down and, like, like yeah. boot the oh, yeah. mouse driver service. Oh, yeah. and and listen, virus they're the biggest virus to all these computers, I yeah. think. Well, they're pretty good, but... Uh, and it's like this, like, 14... Yeah, 14... Um, well, he was asking me if I... It's all about portable. If any of the vendors for the uh, microbiome... Yeah, see, now it's definitely has failed. Failed, failed me at this point. You can see just how wiry and, and scraggly it is up there. Okay, so what would you do normally if you saw it like that? A long time ago, I would have killed this print. Um, and frankly, at this point, I'd probably wait until I get the thermal sock in. Because that's the only variable that has changed. Gotcha. So you're pretty sure that it's just the lack of like that tape or the thermal sock that's not keeping the heat in. It's causing it to basically... I mean, I could, I could set the print temp from 200 up to like... 210 and just let it run hot depending upon what I'm trying to accomplish. But that might be a bit of a hack for the real solution. Yeah. Gotcha. Because I've been running this at like 190 when I had it running well. Because you want it to be just the right temperature that it cools. It's a very narrow range. It's kind of like that with kitten formula, actually. They, 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 they love formula. It's exactly 102 degrees because that's what their mom's body temperature normally is. But if you let it cool to like 98 degrees, they won't, they won't drink it anymore. If you look at this part. This is what you get when you, your temperature is too high. You get that stringing in between parts. Yeah. Oh, I see. So. And even now, you can see that this this had some strings in between. Here. That stringiness that's between the legs there is what you're talking about. Yeah. Let's, let's kill this. Why not? We got pen. And that's just an effect of it not being quite hot enough or yeah. not being the right temperature. <laughs> yeah, you can see this is garbage. <laughs> cool thing is, is a couple of students at UNC, I think at UNC, have, uh, are putting together a filament recycling equipment. Oh, so, so they'll be able to take the scraps that weren't useful and then reuse the film? Grind it back Do you think it chemically filament. alters the filaments, filaments to the point where, or the, the material? So some people get really particular about the filament that they use. They'll only use high, high quality, high tolerances that are like laser verified and The stuff. way that you're saying that, I'm getting the sense that you group those people into the same people who only use monster cables for their yeah, audio system. Yeah, I guess. Well, I get those people if they are printing miniatures and they are going for the finest gotcha. print quality. Right. But for people that are printing coarse objects for structural elements. Who cares? I get my stuff from Makeshaper. They're local. They're in Sanford. Mm. Um, and for the most part, I end up buying in bulk through um, through my school. But no, I think they got absorbed by somebody. I just ordered the other day. Okay, maybe not. 
I just bought a bunch of my film on, off Amazon, but you think they, uh, I mean, just because I didn't know where else, but so this, this make shaper, make shaper place is uh, a local place. They're local, they're similar in price to what's available on Amazon. It was like 15, 16 bucks and a spool. Unless you're in that category of people who are looking for the super fine detail in your quality, you don't really have to worry too much about what material you're working with. Which I can imagine if this, this group of UNC students is, is setting up to recycle filament. They're going to mix a bunch of colors from right. a bunch of different manufacturers. Tolerances are going to be way off. It's supposed to be 1.75, but it's going to be like plus or minus right. 0.1. And prints won't be the best, but it, if, it's if it can be functional, yeah, it, it could be used for, for like a draft copy yeah. of stuff, or you could just have draft filament that people could use for like whatever. Yeah. So I'll show you what the Cura looks like because sure. now we printed and it didn't look good. This is the recommended settings, right? I said 0.1. Let's set this to 0.2. 20%. Support material, all this stuff. This is the basics. But I need to change the temperature. So I got to go to custom. And I know that temperature is in material. So I'm going to just crank it. Rip it. 210. Why not? Well, it's good not only to see how to do that, but also what a, a, a reasonable temperature to change is. Like, some people wouldn't know to go from 200 to 210. And they might just, just go 200 to 201 and wouldn't see any difference. Or they'd go to 200 to 250 and be like, oh, yeah. I made a mistake. For the most part, you know, we're, we're demoing this now. I want to show dramatic change. If I were at home, I'd probably go a little bit slower than Oh, so 210 is a lot. Yeah, 10 gotcha. degrees is definitely okay. a lot. But That's a demo. That no problem. <laughs> Let me know how it goes. Yeah, well, I, I won't be getting this full after Christmas sometimes. So yeah, it'll be a while. But I'm sure I'll ask a lot of questions. And we, we, we can have like a little uh, well, I'll put this pow wow session. So you can always review yeah, it. Right, on. right. So, I mean, I really re appreciate you coming in and, and, in and giving the demo. So I feel like this is a useful thing that people, you kind of, like by doing this, I'm time shifting it so that other people can take advantage of this even though they weren't here right now. Well, here's my last bit of advice. First it's got the little like push to insert and push to remove micro SD slot. And if you're not careful, you'll send it sailing across the room. Gotcha. But is that a bug or a feature? I don't know. It could be a weapon, right? Some I mean, people, if used properly. Some people get micro SD to SD card adapters and they mount the SD card slot up here because right. they just SD is just micro SD. It's easier to work with, yeah. Yeah, um, but then again, a lot of people just end up doing an uh, octoprint server. So, oh, no, no, now that I know about octoprint, I'm going to check that out. Well, we're buying it for this $3 million, but the $3 million is going to be kept here, and we will give it out to people, you know, all the time. We'll, we'll manage it for you, you know. Yeah, but this, but this letter of Thomas Jefferson's letter. No, no, I've been working on that for a while. That's going to be very This is an important document. Give me about 15 minutes. Yeah. It's like, no, I've been, I've, I've been working on it, and I built it as a prototype. I'm building it to the east end. It's the same draft that I built. Very off wire angles. And I wasn't sure we just so them, done. So I, built the I, I just took a demo from start to finish, yeah. and I didn't know anything. And now I more or less know how to use it. And I'll put the video on where you can watch it if you want. Well, it's awesome. It is cool to have like. You so I end up having to print all these things and ship them to my sister. Sample craft fairs up in Michigan, but they're totally like. They can't even remember their passwords to give me their Right, computers. no, they're like my parents with technology, I get <laughs> so, it. So, like, they call me to ask me what their password was. Right. So, <laughs> so do you think it, it, they, they, well, it's probably not something they could use then? That's what I'm wondering. Like, yeah. It's still a hacker's tool. Yeah, no, this is not, like, my Surface okay. laptop I love. I would not recommend it to anybody who doesn't know how to fix computer issues because, okay. yeah. No, it's it's a good thought, but yeah, it's, like I had a long time. Uh, I wanted to make a webcam system that was really high quality that you could kind of you know point tilt zoom, and also uh, that I could give to my uh, ailing grandmother who is not entirely all together and still have her be able to use it. And that was going to be not a non that was a non goer. Like I even I tried with a laptop and she couldn't even log into the laptop. But Facebook made the portal there, and I've been loving the hell out of it for the last couple of weeks because even my parents, like, they just sat down and started using it. It was super easy. And they are not technophiles. So um, the fact that they could do that means that I think just about anyone could. And it's, it's actually super quality for what it does and so easy to use that I think that's, it's going to be a disruptive thing, I think. I think it's going to take a big bite out of telecom. They're going to sell it. 
the, the big, you know, the ethical issues about whether or not Facebook's, you know, going to use their walled garden for uh, good purposes or not, that's a whole different story. But right now, at least, I mean, they have a vested interest in making sure the product is fairly secure. Because if they get any, like, issues like Google or, or Alexa, when they, you know, had their privacy oh, yeah. issues and they were recording stuff they shouldn't have been recording, uh, that'll kill it right off. And so I'm pretty confident that they've probably done a good job at making it fairly secure, at least this first generation. And we'll see what happens. Because yeah, it's like Tesla. If, if if Musk put out the Tesla and the first like if they within a first year like they had one or two people get exploded and die from it, that was going to be a bad thing for their business. And that didn't happen. They did that didn't happen because they they put a ton of work in to make sure it was going to be super safe. And I think Facebook did the same thing with that. They, it's funny they still are getting bad press for like the three people that have died in them over the last five years. Well, and yeah, and we all know the stories behind about that and like how a person puts on auto drive and like does ridiculous things like go to sleep. Um, yeah. That's unfortunate, but um, I, like it's it's one of those things where I, I think well, people, people kind of know. Just find new ways to do stupid things, build right. themselves in all novel ways. So they always happen. Nice. I think it's great that people are so like I, I'm basically what I decided was that I liked it so much that I wanted to give it away to some friends or family for Christmas. So I asked my friends and family on Facebook, hey, um, if any of you want to actually kind of have a chat and get to know people uh, and, and have a chat with me, maybe I'm going to give this to one of you guys who will do that. And I tagged like 70 people and. A lot of them actually said they didn't want to do it because of these privacy reasons. And there was, I'm like, that's super awesome. That's great that you have this concern and this skepticism. Uh, I have my own reasons for thinking why this particular one is okay, but I totally respect why you didn't want that. And then I have a bunch of other people who are like, yeah, I think you've convinced me. I'm on board. And so I'm going to be giving away one to one of my friends or family over the Christmas. Whoever wants one. So not everybody's in, like some of them have specifically said, I feel weird about taking a $300 thing from someone that I you know, haven't spoken with in 20 years. And I'm like, well, that's cool. Um, uh, but, you know, for the other ones, it's like it's just like a, it's a fun way to kind of evangelize something I think is a really good technology. You know, one of those small those things you printed up there, one of those small things is great to have in events. We, we do events where. Uh, oh, the decals? Event. Yeah, those would be great to hand out. I agree, Love except those. Uh, the, what I'd be worried about is that they might put them places that we wouldn't want them necessarily, our name or our brand associates. Like, if they start tagging, like, you know, if they start graffitiing or putting it up in places where it shouldn't be, then our brand is associated with van vandalism. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure there's a spot yeah, I mean, sticker we have, in, we have those tri our bio stickers out there. Well, just just I like the, uh, just stickers. I like the I idea know. of making laptop stickers and stuff so that yeah. people are specifically only using them for that purpose. Yeah. But yeah. that's kind of like, you know, they might just put that anywhere. Oh, okay. Um, but I, that, they were intended for, like, window decal or that kind of thing for people who are already Splat Space members. Okay. And that would be more meaningful, I think, because as I said, when I drive around and see TRC stickers, it's like I, I feel like I'm part of this kind of club of people who just realize that climbing is awesome and that TRC is awesome. And you know what I mean? And having that kind of kinship without even really knowing who the person is, I kind of wanted to emulate that. Okay, okay. Is that cool? Yeah, I was just I still No, I, I, otherwise I totally we, like your idea. We've been handing out business cards for Splat. Well, the, the, the places that we go, yeah. are, yeah. somebody who comes up to the Rad Lab do-it-yourself biology table is, it's already a subset right there. No, right, I agree. But that subset can include a lot of people that maybe have some inkling of, like, the same spirit but also maybe a little more maliciousness or mischievousness, and you know what I mean? There's there's a larger subset of people. Well, all right, so this is an interesting no, subject. I know, I know, I know. But uh, we have people who have literally bought DIY CRISPR kits and have injected themselves with their own CRISPR things. Um, and so I, I don't think that's malicious, but I think the potential behind that from, for damage to the human race is so extreme that it could be almost defaulted to maliciousness but to have that level of wanton disregard for everybody's safety. Like if, 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 if we have garage experimenters who are doing things with their genome that could potentially be propagated to children or other things, I think that exemplifies a sense of like maybe that crossing that line of we can do this, but should we? Well, I have a DIY CRISPR kit, and someday we'll be doing a class on that. Awesome. Just not putting it in there. So. No, no. We'll be doing it with people, with a defined thing. Yeah. Well, on E. coli. Well, no, this is this is yeah. the thing. I like, because like, it yeah. seems reasonable to say, well, as long as you're not doing it on people, do it on plants. Or, but if you do it to anything that's in the ecosystem, yeah. that could potentially get out there. And well, there are people who well. Okay. I've had talks about this. So. All right, very good. I, I, He's I'm new to it. So. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm talking to, I'm preaching to the choir.
All I want is, I do want to implant an RFID chip in my hand. An RFID chip. I can help you with that if you want. I really want to do that. Like, so when when vets, uh, when when rescues have their cats, and we we have to chip them, yeah. um, it's a very simple process that we do on our own. You just you just scruff the cat, put the chip. It's a big old needle, oh, yeah. but it's not too bad. No. And so I can hook you up with the tools some, that you would need. Uh, some like probably what's in this. Um, could you remind me of your name again? Because I, Tom. Tom. Okay, Ryan.